Hey guys, Dev with Crime Hive, and we're continuing on with the Gannon Staw case. And uh, where we're picking up here is in the affidavit. We're just kind of reading through this, kind of getting an overview of the case. And then um, in some other videos here, we're going to go into some more detail on certain aspects of it. So again, just want to get you guys an overview of all these things that are happening with the affidavit, which I thought was really important. I'm going to move this up again. Oh, this is too distracting. Anyway, so we pick back up. Uh, Letitia rents this Kia it's a, at the airport. Um, it's, a, it's a rented Kia. She gives excuses to her husband that um, they need to put lower mileage on their other vehicle because it's leased. And uh, investigators start looking through the, these records, and and so you know they actually find blood in the trunk of the Kia Rio. What's interesting is they couldn't really figure out, they couldn't get a good sample of that, and they figured it's because there's a lot of people that uh, tend to, to rent that vehicle. So they just, they just, too much information, they couldn't conclude where that sample came from. And uh, But what's interesting, though, just some of the things, again, that you see with investigators and what they do, they actually collected the air filter of that vehicle to identify particles that might be useful to identify where the vehicle might have been. So they, all, uh, they were also unable to recover any GPS data and location history, but they definitely searched that possibility. So uh, they really focused on the Volkswagen Tiguan, though, because they believed that was the, the vehicle to transport the remains of Gannett. And, and so that's what it's kind of mentioning here. Uh, they knew that Letitia had to clean this vehicle. There was evidence that she actually did go to a car wash and clean the vehicle right before she interviewed with investigators, uh, so it had recently been cleaned. Uh, they even looked through the computer system of the vehicle to gather information, so there's a lot going on here. Uh, they, uh, they used luminol. They did find blood evidence in the Tiguan that, uh, that is uh, being analyzed, and they found it in various areas of the Tiguan. So uh, going through that, uh, a couple things here again. I talked about the baking soda and vinegar being used to clean up blood. That was pretty uh, compelling evidence there. Um, and then uh, we go here with, let's see, so this is uh, more data from the vehicle that was being used. So um, another thing here that, that was really of note was she, when, when uh, Letitia was interviewing with investigators, she brought her own notes and Investigators noted that it was rare for someone to bring notes to an interview. So just she was doing these suspicious things. They're just red flags that just kept uh, popping up. And, you know, and, and, and you'll see with some of these stories that she mentioned, uh, what happens is when she's interviewing. So investigators have found all this evidence. They believe that Letitia was the only person, the adult a person home with Gannon during the time of his disappearance. Uh, all the evidence suggests that. And so what happens is Letitia starts just saying all these made-up things, such as uh, some male, Hispanic male named Eduardo had held her at gunpoint and raped her in the home, and that there was a struggle. Gannon tried to help. Uh, Letitia was saying things like she blacked out multiple times while she was being attacked, and uh, that's what you're reading about here. Uh, you know, she, she, uh, she even said that she cleaned up the area after the attack, after she was attacked. Um, investigators tried to get her to submit to a, a SANE exam, which is a sexual assault nurse examiner. She refused to do that. There was never, uh, they were never able to do that type of test. Um, and then as you go through here, she, uh, they, uh, they actually started getting more evidence from the home security which I thought was really interesting. The reason I kind of pointed that out was the ADT home surveillance activity, it's, it's, it's showing motion camera sensors. There's all these time logs that are going on. And you see that during the murder, there's actually a lot of activity. And so they think that this was Letitia going upstairs and downstairs multiple times to get cleaning supplies, cleaning up the crime scene. So you can see there's a lot of activity that's corroborated with this ADT home security evidence. So I thought that was another interesting aspect of the case. Um, and then uh, 
can keep kind of going through. There's a lot of information here, but I just want to point out some of the, the really interesting things. Um, crime scene investigators investigators also noticed that someone attempted to clean up the walls, and this is based on that blue star region that had reacted on the wall. They can determine things like that. I mean, there's just so many intricate pieces, and it's really fascinating. A couple pictures of the mattress um, that was used. Now, um, what they determined, now this, this gentleman, uh, Tom Griffin, he was uh, basically works as a crime scene analyst. He concluded that the stains on the wall in Gannon's room were consistent with one or more blood spatter producing events, which could be a gunshot, blunt force trauma, or even a stabbing. So uh, he did not believe the stains were aspirated blood, primarily due to the lack of air bubbles in the stains. So that's how in-depth this, this case goes. Uh, they even went as far as trying to collect samples of blood from inside the electrical outlets, uh, which was very interesting as well. Again, hard to completely clean up a crime scene. Uh, you know, here's a picture of the torn out uh, carpet that investigators took with them as evidence. Uh, and then... You know, they, they found things like in the dishwasher, there were multiple carpet brushes with carpet fibers on them, and just all this little evidence they, they keep stacking up against Leticia as you go through. So uh, let's see, as we're getting towards the end here, and then we'll, uh, again, we'll go into certain segments of this affidavit, and we'll, we'll kind of pinpoint certain areas of focus. So uh, they, they determined that her her historical cell site analysis was unusual because her phone would be disconnected from the cellular network for several hours and then she would turn it back on. So they believe that uh, she was trying to um, cover up the crime by turning off her phone or shutting it off and then turning it back on. So there was a lot of data talking about that. Uh, GPS on her phone. Okay. Now, what we'll do is is we're going to go into another segment here because there's just so much information. We're going to do one more part with the affidavit, and we'll talk about that, and then uh, we'll we'll go further into analysis on this case. So uh, stay tuned for the next part. Again, for more information, more videos, crime tips, just go to crimehive.com, and you guys can be filled in the loop with those upcoming videos that are going to be coming out and, and upcoming uh, blog posts and all sorts of information for you guys. Uh, until next time, we'll see you in the next video.